How are you guys doing so far? Good. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. Well, uh, it's my great privilege and pleasure to introduce your next speaker, a man that I've known my entire life, a man who's always modeled love and integrity and responsibility. And he's shown me what it means, what it looks like to walk worthy. He's my biggest role model and mentor, and he's the wisest and most insightful man that I know. He taught me what it means to be a man, and he taught me that I am a man. He taught me to take responsibility, to be active and not passive, to live pure, to speak true, to right wrong, to honor the king. He taught me to love what is good and hate what is evil, and he's modeled all of these things for me. He's a man who's always shown what it means to walk worthy. He likes to say that trail men are the best men that he knows. I'd like to say that he's the best man that I know. He's a man with many titles, but his favorites are husband and father. So it's with greatest pleasure and pride that I introduce to you the CEO of Trail Life USA and my dad, Mark Hancock. He didn't tell me what he was going to say. Look, come back up here. I can slap you. <laughs> Logan, you come up here too. Thank you, that was very kind. Listen, I have slain my thousands. You will slay your ten thousands. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I have an amazing wife and an amazing family, and uh, God has blessed me with uh, blessed me with that. And uh, my extended family of trailmen, and I've I've gotten me. I've, we're a little bit short on time, so I'm going to ask you to bear with me. I'm, I'm going to depart from my notes and just share from my heart. If that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> I've, I've got three points that I wanted to make, and I'm, I, I want to make those points, but I, I want to stay away from the notes. I want, you know, for time's sake, and one because also I just, I just want to share, share my heart. And it would take a lot more time than we have um, if this type of thing was measured in time. So the, so the way that I, I have to do it is, 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 is the best way that I believe that, that we're equipped to receive things is heart to heart. Thank you so much. On behalf of the board and the staff and, and the, the tens of thousands of boys who are in this program, thank you for your gifts, for your talents, for laying your life down. We know what it takes. We know the price that you pay. We know that any, any more than, 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 than I'm doing this by myself, we know that your families pay a price for, for what it is that you give to Trail Life USA. I'm blessed to meet hundreds of trailmen around the country, give the opportunity to talk to them, look them in the eye and shake their hand. And I find myself sharing the same three truths over and over again that just seem to come up when I meet trailmen. I want to share those three truths. I was just call this three truths for the trail. And the first one would be, what you are doing matters. The enemy would try to belittle what it is that you're doing. He would try to discourage you by what you see. And I want to confirm for you that what you do matters. If anyone tells you any different, it's too late because it's already changing things. I was at a gathering in Ohio with an area, a regional gathering, area regional gathering, and I ran, I was walking from the dining hall down to the cabins area, and I passed a dad, and, and as, 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 I, as I, I stopped and said, hey, you having a good time? 
And he says, yeah, I'm having a wonderful time. I said, can I tell you something? I said, absolutely. What, what's going on? He said, I've never camped before. I've never been camping before. And it was a rainy week, and the, we the weather was horrible for camping. <laughs> but he said, I've never camped before. My son and I have never done this before. This is my first weekend. And because the area put it together, they made it easy for everybody. They helped everybody, prepared, prepared the meals and all those things. And they made it easy for this father for the first time to take his son camping. And I think his son, if I remember correctly, was 10, 11 years old. And he said, I have to tell you this. And with tears in his eyes, he said, this morning, walking from uh, one activity to the other activity, so I was walking with my son, and he reached up, and he took my hand. He said, my son hasn't held my hand in years. He said, I thought we were through. I thought I would never have that experience again and take, take my, my young man's hand and walk and be proud as his father and leading him in that and walking with him. I thought I would never have that opportunity again. What you do makes a difference. That father is forever changed by that experience. And now he's a camper. You can't tell me that it doesn't matter. Boys without fathers, my wife can tell you that's where my heart is. And if there's any secret, if there's two big secrets that God's doing in Trail Life USA that you'll miss if you just look at marketing and you miss the heart of God. One of those secrets is he loves those broken boys. And boys are getting godly mentors for Trail Life USA. Men without sons are joining, and sons without fathers are connecting. That's, that matters. I was at Camp Aiken not too long ago, walking along the lake. And the gentleman that I'm telling the story is, 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 is here. I may have some of the details wrong, but this is my memory. He was on one side of the pond, and we just stopped to talk, and we were just sharing about his troop, and he was talking to me about the activities in truth and, and how it's growing and what they're doing and what's, what, what's, what's fun about it and what he's enjoying about it. And he points across the lake, and there was a, a young man there, I want to say maybe late 20s, early Thursday, thir early 30s, and he was down on one knee, and there was a little, probably a fox or, 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 or a hawk, a little boy there with him, and he's just baiting his hook. And he says, that man over there, he said, that's my son. He said, we haven't had much of a relationship. But because of trail life, I'm doing trail life with my son. And he's never had much of a relationship with his son. And he's doing trail life with his son. And through this experience, God is restoring that generation. He says, and I can spend time with my son and my grandson when that would have been impossible under any other thing. You cannot tell me that what you're doing is not making a difference. It matters. What you do matters. Single moms are having their prayers answered, crying out to God. I can't tell you how many moms have come to me and said, I prayed for you. Not me specifically. She said, I prayed for years. I've been calling out to God for something like Trail Life USA because I needed somewhere to send my son where he was safe, where it was a God godly environment. You've probably heard the story before, but I remember one of our first trail leader trainings. We had a bonfire afterwards. It was in Virginia. I was standing around the fire, and a woman came up to me. She said, thank you. And I said, thank you for what? She said, 10 years ago, my husband passed away and left me with a two-year-old son. said, now he's a navigator in Trail Life USA, surrounded by godly men. She said, my husband would want me to thank you. You can't tell me that it doesn't matter. Men are finding brothers. This is the second hidden intent of God in Trail Life USA. Men finding brothers, people like-minded who care about the generations. Ron Orr talked about it last night. You know, he's, I told him, I saw pass him in the hall. I said, you got it, man. You got, you got it here. You understand that there's something, there are so many things. Hit. I, can, I can go through a list of things that are hidden in Trail of USA that we didn't put there. You know, it's the glory of God to hide a matter and the glory of man to seek it out. 
I'm probably misquoting that scripture, but we stumble across things as, how'd that get there? And one of the things that he's doing is restoring relationships, taking men who weren't fathered, taking men who didn't know how to work alongside other men or communicate with other men or didn't know how to be vulnerable or to reach out or to share, to open up to another man, another man. Returned from the New Mexico summer adventure that Woody shared that video. Gosh, Woody, that was just great. I was put together by volunteers. I returned, returned from there, and I got an email from a father who I'd met out there. He says, what do I do? My 13-year-old son stumbled across pornography, and now he's addicted. What would he have done? if he was not willing to be vulnerable and open up and say, hey, reach out to another brother in the faith that he trusts and say, can you help me with this? And fortunately, because of our relationships with Covenant Eyes and, and family life and those other things, we were able to provide some resources for him to help his son. That will make an eternal difference, generational difference in that young man's life because Woody put together a summer adventure in New Mexico. What you are doing matters. It's a big deal. Number two, you have what it takes. I find myself saying that over and over again. And we heard some of that yesterday, both my own testimony and testimony of some other men who said, you know, said, I'm just not, this is, I don't, I can't. <laughs> and when I talk to you about living on the edge of your faith, that's where my wife and I, we've really purposed in our lives, our whole married life. We've lived out in places where it's beyond what it is that we're capable of doing on our own strength. We like it there. We, we just like being out on the edge where you hug God tighter. I think that's what he calls us to. I think that we will fail not because, we don't cha- because we've over-challenged ourselves or because we've over-challenged young men. I think we'll fail because we under-challenge them. We don't expect enough. And so you do have what it takes. I can assure you that God never calls you to something and sets you into something that he doesn't equip you for. That would not be the kind of loving father that I've run across that I've met. You've got what it takes. I, I, love, I love Gideon. You know, here the, the Midianites and the Amalekites are up against them. The Israelites, they're, they're stuck up in the mountains, just hidden in these caves, hiding there. And they, every once in a while, the Midianites rush up there and take all their stuff and run away with it. And here Gideon is threshing wheat in a wine press and all you guys know the story and it's, it's, he's called, called out to do this thing he, he didn't have what it takes his response was how can I restore Israel how can I run a troop how can I do an area how can I reach out these words I don't know how to speak to boys I don't know what to do how can I how can I how can I fill in the blank this unlikely hero had every reason to reject the idea that he would be used by God in bringing victory or deliverance to somebody. But the Lord had a different plan. Gideon, the least of the weakest, was chosen. Glory to God. It's not a mistake. It's very much like God to call the unlikely, to cause us to dig deep, to lean in, to be more dependent on him, to recognize that without him we cannot do it. I'm coming to a place where we've come to a place where we can't, if we can accomplish it in our own strength, we have to wonder if it's worth doing. I'm believing that he calls us to live on the edge of the abilities and the space where only he can get the glory. He'll equip you with what you need to do what he has called you to do. You have what it takes. The third truth I find myself sharing constantly on the trail is our best work is relational. And I use that word relational to counter another word that we could easily used to talk about how people interrelate. And that other word would be positional. And positional relationships are determined just by titles, by where you fit in that hierarchy kind of thing. Well, I'm telling you that what I've discovered in trail life, what God has hidden in here, is that the best work that we're doing is, is relational. How it is that we get together, not in a, in a 
hierarchical kind of thing, like who is over me or whatever, but how it is that we work back and forth collaboratively to do more together than what we could do on our own. There's a synergy, there's something powerful that happens when people say, I'm gonna hold this with a light touch. I may have this title, but I want the best outcome. So I'm holding that with a light touch because I just want what's best. So let's just all get what's best. Let's create an environment. We, we have the, even the structure we use in our home office, we have what we call deliverables, things that we're working on, and any member of our team can lead a diver, deliverable. I'm on some, te some teams where I'm working for the team leader. I'm on other teams where I'm the team leader. And that's how, that, that's how I believe that, all, that our best work is done. When we're rel relationally, we seek out who is best gifted and best best prepared to be in that place. Now, I'm always telling the staff this too. When you work for Trail Life USA, we are going to drag you kicking and screaming into authenticity, and we're also gonna take you to a place where you're gonna do stuff that you haven't done before, and it's, you're gonna be expected to do it well. Poor Hannah cries about three times a week because she, <laughs> she came to us, she wanted to answer phones. You want to work half days or something, some crazy idea she had, and she said just. <laughs> Listen, you're, you're not, you know, we sat down with her for a while. I'm thinking, what the heck? You know, where have you been? What are you hiding on the inside of you? God's calling you to, God's calling you to something. And so that's why she cries three times a week. No. So hard. Yeah. And then she does it over and over again. She performs, she knocks it out of the park. And then she, mm. <laughs> Pretending like she knew all along that she was. Are you back there, Hannah? I'm picking on you, okay? Okay. <laughs> She's crying, yeah. <laughs> Listen, our best work is relational. When we can change a boy, a boy's or a man's or a woman's perspective on themselves. You're changing, you're changing the future. You're, you're changing their future. You're changing a genera generations. You're changing people to follow after them. So how can we be better at the relation? When I talk about this at the TLTs, do we have any, I don't think we have any little guys here. Do we have any Woodlands Trail men here today? I don't think we do. Can't see, I don't think we do. Rob Green, Rob Green? okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, Rob Green and I used to have exactly the same physical build. <laughs> and when he got sick, I felt so bad for him. <laughs> All right, Woodlands Trailman. How do we greet, what do we need, what, what, what's, what do we need to do with Woodlands Trailman? Those little guys need to know that, there's a, that, that they're involved in a process, and you can't use this language with them, but that they're involved in a process where God is growing them into something. And that there are people who have gone before them that believe in them, and that are going to provide the kind of support and going to give them a sense of, 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 of confidence to step into something that they can't quite see yet. Now, you can't use that words with them, but you can do this. When you see one, you get down on one knee, eyeball to eyeball with that little guy, you give, him, you give him a trailman's handshake and you say, hey, Jimmy. His name not Jimmy, don't say Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are taking notes. So I don't know. <laughs> and you call that young man up to what he's going to be. You know, you, you're a fox. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool. You know what? You're going to be a hawk one day. And then you're going to be a mountain lion and a navigator. And one, maybe one day you'll be a freedom rangerman. Because God is moving in your life, and he's got big ideas for you and big plans for you, and he wants to call you into big kingdom business with him, and you and God are going to do great things. Tell me that won't do so. Tell me you didn't need that. Our best work is relational. It's not keeping them in line and getting them their, their stuff, their branches or their leaves or however it's working this week, Laura. <laughs> now, Laura is doing a great job. It took us... <laughs> now Laura's crying. No. It, 
hey, I got to tell you something funny. It took us months to, 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 for the board to understand <laughs> the Woodlands Trail program. The boards picked it up like that. The board was like, <laughs> leaves, branches. <laughs> but, you know, we, if, if, if we get all, if we get the programs uh, stuff, you know, we can get all that stuff right. We can get the program right, we can get the, the, the awards right, we can get the progression right. But if we don't get that part right where that little guy understands where it is that he's going and that there's somebody who's leading him there, and that it's not all this big mystery, but that there's somebody who understands the place that he's going to and can help him get there. If we don't get that right, then, we, then, we, then we've really messed up the whole thing. We have to get that right. At our core, our best work is relational, it's not positional. Our navigators need eye-to-eye -eye focused attention. When you run into those guys, it's got to be eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball talking to them on their level. They need to be drawn up. Hey. Man, are you gonna, you, 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 you gonna be an adventurer? What, what, are you, what are you hoping for? What are you looking forward to? You draw, draw them up to those things. What are you, who is, who is, tell, tell, me, tell me where you are in your life with God. Talk to me about your relationship with the Lord, eyeball to eyeball. That's the kind of things we do best and we need to do. Adventurers, we've got to listen to those boys. If you're leading adventurers and you're talking more than than anybody else in the room, and back up and say, how relational is it? What kind of conversation is that if you're dominating it? We have to listen to ventures, because honestly, they're not really interested in what it is that you have to say until you've heard what it is that they have to say. Men, relating with each other. Take the time, take a chance. Build a bridge with men in your troop. Build some kind of a friendship bridge. When I use that language, I'm talking about when we're going to speak into each other's lives. See, I need to be surrounded by godly men. I need my sons to be surrounded by godly men. But it's not good enough just to be surrounded by them. I need some sort of interaction there where somebody can speak into my life. I need some kind of interaction where people will either voluntarily or on my request will say, will come to me and tell me the things I need to fix, the things I'm messing, the things I'm messing up. See, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm picky about things that we do at Trail of USA as staff because the staff tells me that I'm picky. And I'm so thankful that they do. You know, you really, you really, you really like everything done perfect. Yeah, I know. But I, 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 I know that because they've told me that. And that's helpful to have those kind of relationships. But you can't have those kind of, you can't have those kind of bridges, you can't have those, re those kind of relationships unless you've built a bridge that's strong enough to carry what it is that you're carrying across, which you have to bring to that person. And building bridges with, with men takes a long time because we've got all this stuff that we put between each other that keeps, you know, we're, we're so positional. You know, who, who, you know, how many of you have in your troop? Like that somehow determines the quality of that man's character. You know, we need, to, we, need, we need to gauge ourselves by, by, by some other sort of thing. And the thing that really matters to God is, is, is the Christ-likeness, the level of Christ-likeness in us. So before we bring things across that bridge, we've got to have a relationship. We've got to have to have built that bridge strong enough so we can carry it. Gail Kelly is the one who, my, our new COO, is the one who sat down and said, you know, hey, I've been talking to staff. You're really picky and you're kind of frustrating some people because you want things done, you know, a certain way. But we've got a bridge. He was, a, he was able to say that to me. I didn't fire him yet. No. <laughs> now he's crying. Jeez. No. Gail and I, Gail and I, we've probably known each other for, for six months or so. And, and we, we built a relationship over there. It was months before he came on staff. But over time, we, we talk back and forth and talk back and forth. And we have the type of relationship. And that's what I need from him. I need him to be able to tell me, hey, this is, this is where you are. This is, this is the effect on the staff of what it is that you're doing, the way that you're doing things. You need to lighten up. You need to adjust this. I have to have those kind of men around me. You have to have those kind of men around you, too. But it takes time to build that, to build that bridge, to build those relationships. Get the positional stuff out of the way. Nobody really cares. You got to build a relational br bridge, and you do that by communicating how much you care, being sincere about it, and opening yourself up and, and, and being willing to listen to what it is that men have to say to you. Because they can help you. Men can help you. Well, thanks for listening. I hope I haven't offended anybody. Let me pray. Can we do that? 
Father, I thank you for these, these men, God, and, and these women. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness and grace over our lives. Lord, I thank you for the, the vision of Trail Life USA, God, the, the tremendous wisdom that you've given to our board, Lord, the incredible talents and skills that, that you've given to our staff, and the passion, the energy, the resources that you have in our volunteers and our leaders around the country. Lord, I just pray for a, a growth in all those things, God. Let us know, God, how we've been faithful. Help us in areas where we're not quite there. Lead us, God, because we need you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.